Hello, this is Chaplain Stevens with the New Jersey Institute of Theological Studies. Uh, I'm coming to you today with a special message, and it's kind of uh, a message uh, directed at men, although it can apply to women as well. Uh, I want to talk about a topic that uh, men try to keep under wraps and hidden, uh, and have been keeping it hidden for years, and that's the subject of pornography. And, you know, one of the things that I know about the devil is, you know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And Jesus went on to uh, talk about how if a man looks at a woman with lust in his heart, he's already committed adultery. And so thinking about these two verses really uh, kind of puts light on the impact and the, the devastation that pornography causes to men in particular. And I'm not saying women aren't uh, purveyors of pornography because some are but 89% of the people that buy and look at pornography are men you know now in today's society you know it seems like it's not a big deal but it is a big deal because pornography is something that takes a man's heart away from God from his loved ones in particular his wife uh, it's something that is devastating and uh, so I want to address it, and I want to talk about it in, in modern terms uh, that you would understand. If you've ever owned a computer or a laptop or an iPad and you've gotten a virus, it's really hard to get a virus off of your electronic device because the people that made the virus make it almost impossible to find it on your device. And a lot of times that's the way it is with sexual sin. It's a virus, and a lot of times it's hidden because what caused the virus and what uh, made the virus uh, problematic for you is hidden beneath layers of memories, past hurts, uh, bitterness, uh, sometimes sexual abuse, sexual assault, and so these things are buried, and the pornography is the virus that latches on to that hurt and makes it almost impossible to get rid of. But viruses can be removed. And we're going to look at a scriptural way to remove uh, the, the virus of pornography. Turn me to James chapter 5, starting in verse 14. Is any among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore confess your sins one to another, pray for one another, so you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And so, you know, just like with a virus, you've got to identify the virus. You have to acknowledge that there is a virus, and it's the same thing with sin whether it's sexual sin, whether it's drug addiction or alcoholism, homosexuality, whatever the sin is, has to be identified. And that's why this verse in James is very important to the process of deliverance. It says, confess your sins or your faults one to another. Part of the problem with the church is we're supposed to be the most transparent people in the world, but often we're the most guarded and hidden people in the world. It's through transparency that deliverance comes. When you open up and you confess that there's hurt, there's pain, there's sin, there's doubt, there's fear, that's when deliverance comes. David was an excellent example of a person that received deliverance because of transparency. I'll give you two scriptural examples. Psalm 51. After David committed adultery and murder, he confessed his sin to God. And one of the most beautiful things about Psalm 51 is David doesn't blame Bathsheba. He doesn't blame his environment. He doesn't blame his circumstances. He doesn't blame his past. You know, because David has some things in his past that might have contributed to it. He didn't even blame that. What David did say was, Against thee and thee only have I sinned, God, and committed this evil in thy sight. And then he asked God to cleanse him and to purge him. David was asking for his deliverance. David went on to say in, in, in the Psalm 51 uh, that he said, Renew a right spirit in me, create in me a clean heart. 
Now, unfortunately, back then, Jesus had yet been to the cross and resurrected. So the clean heart part was something David want, wanted, but he couldn't get. So in a weird way, David was speaking prophetically to the future. But David did repent, and he did acknowledge that he sinned against God. He didn't blame Bathsheba or anything. He, he put the onus on himself. And at the very end of Psalm 51, David said, I can offer you uh, uh, sacrifices, but what really pleases God is a broken and contrite spirit. And, that, and that's the thing that we have to understand. There has to be contrition. God will provide the forgive forgiveness. First John 1 and 9 says, He's faithful and just to forgive us of sin and cleanse us from unrighteousness. God is faithful. God is just. And He will forgive. But the part that we have to provide is the contrition and the being sorry for the sin. When we provide that, God does the rest. The other psalm that um, really touches my heart is Psalm 13, when David said, How long will you hide your face from me, God, forever? And so there are times in our life when we feel helpless, we feel hopeless. And what we have to do is even confess that feeling to God. You know, I've heard people say, Oh, never let God know you're angry with him. Or never uh, tell God, you know, the bad thing. God already knows. What God wants is honesty. So if you feel helpless, I tell my friends that are that I do uh, help with in drug groups. The first step in deliverance is acknowledging to God, God, I can't do this by myself. I need help. I need to be set free. I need your power. When we do that, that's when God comes through. But we, as, as long as we try to hide it and act like we can deal with it. My willpower will get me through it. You're not going to make it. The Bible says we should put no confidence in the flesh. Jesus told the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. All of our flesh is weak. None of us can overcome sin through the flesh. None of us can overcome sin through our confidence in our own willpower and ability. It's only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring about conviction and to lead and guide us into all truth. That's what's going to cause us to receive the deliverance that we need. So my brothers, if you're out there today and you're hooked on pornography, the first step is acknowledging I have a problem. Second step is get an accountability partner. Talk to somebody that, that, that can understand your struggle and that will pray for you. You know, find somebody that say, hey man, I had a struggle last night. Pray for me. You know, same thing with alcoholism, same thing with drug addiction. You need somebody that you can be accountable to. Somebody that's not going to put your business in the street, but is going to really fast and pray with you. Last thing I'll say is fasting is vital to deliverance. When you fast, it breaks the stronghold. It breaks the power over your flesh. And, and you don't fast to prove to God how tough you are. You fast so your spirit can be in control. It's like, it's, like, it's like cruise control spiritually. When you fast, you're allowing your spirit to have free reign and control. And that allows the Holy Spirit to come in and to give you deliverance. To give you freedom from that thing that has you in bondage. So I'm telling you, you know, the thing that you need to do is confess. Ask God for strength. Find an accountability partner. And fast. Fast regularly. I'm not saying you got to starve yourself. But be fa have a fasted behavior, you know. Sometimes skip breakfast and read your Bible. Sometimes skip lunch and just go to, go to your prayer closet, you know. Push the plate back, talk to God, ask for help. Stay in that, stay in that word. Your word, that word is the sword of the Spirit, and you need that. So be encouraged, don't be discouraged, and do the things that uh, we pointed out in this video, and you're on the road to deliverance. God bless you. And have a great day in Jesus.